Welcome to Nice and Blunt. My name is Adam Riancho, and it's time for part two of my quarterback rankings. We're going 17 through 35, ranking all the remaining starting quarterbacks in the NFL. Here is a reminder on the screen of my top 16, a tiered breakdown. If you want individual player takes, go ahead and check out that video on my channel. But we're going to move forward, entering a new tier at number 17. And this next tier has three quarterbacks that still offer very high upside, but none have any rushing value. And they all also have injury concerns. Number 17 is Tua Tagovailoa of the Miami Dolphins, who we all know had major concussion problems just two seasons ago. But last year he did stay healthy and he just got paid, but he doesn't feel like a truly elite quarterback who really deserves top five numbers, in my opinion. I could be wrong, but last year, despite leading the NFL in passing yards, he only averaged 16.5 fantasy points per game, and this channel is geared towards fantasy football. So I'm not that high on Tua, and last year it was a tale of two seasons for him. In the first eight games, he averaged 302 passing yards per game with 18 touchdowns, seven interceptions, an average of 19.8 points per game in September and October. But if you look at the final nine games of the year, he was a lot worse. He averaged 245 passing yards per game with only 11 touchdowns and another seven interceptions. He only put up 13.2 points per game in November and December. So weather definitely impacts him. He has two great wide receivers in Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell, but the Dolphins have an elite run scheme. They kind of feel like a run first offense. And if the backfield combines for another 30 touchdowns this year, there's no chance that Tua is a top 10 quarterback in fantasy. So I like him as my backup, but not as my starter. He'll start off hot as always, but inevitably he's going to fade in the second half of the year. I think his ADP is overpriced at quarterback 15, pick 122. These next two players are in the same tier for me and they're priced 20 picks cheaper. That's why I usually pass on Tua Tagovailoa. At number 18, I have Kirk Cousins of the Atlanta Falcons, who was special last year in fantasy. He averaged 19.7 points per game, which ranked as quarterback five in 2023. There's a chance that he's just as good even after moving to Atlanta because they have a top 10 offensive line, maybe even better, possibly top five. And his new play caller comes from the same Sean McVay system as his former coach, Kevin O'Connell. But to expect that he is going to be just as good, I think is wishful thinking, because not only is he throwing to a brand new, still unproven bevy of weapons in Drake London, Kyle Pitts, and Darnell Mooney, but he's also coming off an Achilles tear, and there are no guarantees that he looks the same or just as good right away or ever again. The risk that he's not the same player, I think is why they drafted Michael Penix this year with the eighth overall pick. He also had no real run game last year in Minnesota. Alexander Madison scored zero rushing touchdowns, and that is obviously going to change when you can hand it off to Bijan Robinson and Tyler Algier in the Falcons offense. So his red zone efficiency is destined to fade, especially considering Drake London has only six touchdowns in two years. Kyle Pitts has only six touchdowns in three years. And Darnell Mooney has only 12 touchdowns total in four years. One of those is a rushing touchdown. And if you look at just the last two seasons, Mooney has only found pay dirt three times. So Cousins is 36 years old this year, and I just don't think he's going to throw for 35-plus passing touchdowns. The schedule is also kind of rough early on, but especially after their Week 12 bye, it's here on the screen. I think the schedule really opens up. There are some great playoff matchups for the Falcons, and I think there'll be great trade targets midseason. But if you do draft any of the Atlanta Falcons this year, other than Bijan, I expect them to start off slow on offense. So fantasy might be a little difficult to predict. As they develop their chemistry, though, I think they will get better and better each week. So just keep that in mind and try to hold on to them for the back half of the season. Cousins ADP is very affordable, going as pick 18 pick 144 overall. I think he's a good backup quarterback. And especially if you do have stacking options, go ahead and take him. I've taken him a decent amount.
At number 19, though, I have Matthew Stafford of the LA Rams, who, just like Cousins, I think Stafford is an excellent backup quarterback with an inexpensive ADP just behind Cousins at quarterback 19, pick 146 overall. I take him a lot because he does have top 10 upside any given week. He's got two elite wide receivers to throw to, but Puka Nakua is currently dealing with a knee injury, and Cooper Cup has been hurt each of the last two years. There's a chance they go down. Beyond them, there is very little depth other than Demarcus Robinson, a rookie Jordan Whittington, and Tutu Atwell. The Rams have good running backs as well, so I think Kyron Williams and Blake Corum might be stealing a lot of the touchdowns in this offense, kind of like Kyron did last year. But despite being 36 years old, just like Kirk Cousins, Matthew Stafford is still a quarterback I'm targeting in drafts because he plays for Sean McVay at the end of the equation. Other than Andy Reid, I think McVay is the best offensive coach in the NFL. And as long as Stafford is healthy, this team can hang 40 points any given Sunday. Stafford is notoriously one of the toughest quarterbacks in the NFL, but he has dealt with back injuries in the past. He's also just getting a new hamstring injury as of today, right before I recorded this. That's not good news. Two years ago, he missed half the season, and there's risk he goes down again with anything that crops up. But I do have the Rams in the NFC Championship game this year. I am a believer that he has one great season left in him. I think they win 12 games this year and the division. I believe in the Rams because of their offense. I want a piece of it wherever I can get it. So Stafford is the last quarterback I'm willing to draft as my quarterback one if I decide to punt the position. And if he is my backup, I feel comfortable enough with him to where I don't need to draft a third. He's a very valuable pick. I take him a lot. But moving on to this next tier, now is where I'm swinging for the fence and just chasing upside. This is my boom bust backup tier. And my favorite of the bunch is Justin Fields of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Fields might not start week one. His Two fumbles in the preseason versus Houston did not help his case at all. But I am convinced he's going to start more than half of the games for the Steelers this year. And when he gets his shot, he's going to have league winning upside in fantasy. He's not a great passer, but he can realistically rush for over a thousand yards if given a full season to start. And on a per game basis, that is fantasy gold. Right now, the Steelers don't have great weapons, but beyond Najee and Jalen Warren at running back, it's just George Pickens and Pat Fryermuth, but there's still a chance they add Brandon Ayuk to this wide receiver core. I would say it's like a 60-40 chance. More likely, he stays in San Francisco. But other than them, he's definitely only going to Pittsburgh if he doesn't re-sign with the Niners. So that would obviously increase the ceiling for Fields if it happened, but ultimately we are drafting him almost strictly for his rushing value. Last year, he averaged 51 rushing yards per game and four rushing touchdowns in 13 games. Two years ago, it was 76 yards per game and eight touchdowns in 15 games. So that's what gives him his top 10 upside. Last year, he was quarterback six in points per game, scoring 19.4 points per game in 12 full matchups. And if Russell Wilson isn't healthy for week one, he might have this job all season long. I'm hoping that is the case. But even if he doesn't, I think worst case scenario, the Steelers bench Russell Wilson during the week nine bye. And I genuinely think it could happen sooner. Here is their schedule. And if Russ starts 0-2 and can't even beat Bo Nix and the Broncos in week two, then why would Mike Tomlin keep him around? They're going to feel the pressure to get Fields under center from not only the fan base, but probably even the owner of the Steelers and they're only paying Russ $1 million on a one-year deal. There is no long-term commitment. It's just a verbal agreement that he has the pole position for the starting job. I don't think he's going to keep it long-term. So that's why Fields will have fantasy value this year. It's just a question of when does it start? And this quarterback 20 ranking might genuinely be too low. If it does change, I think it would be going up, not down. And at the moment, you can draft him as quarterback 25 still on underdog. Pick 179 is a steal if he does play a full season. He is a league winner. I've started to take him a lot. Number 21, though. For me is Geno Smith of the Seattle Seahawks, and there's several reasons to be optimistic for Geno. He's got three good wide receivers, although 32-year-old Tyler Lockett is already banged up. 
He gets a new head coach and new offensive coordinator. Ryan Grubb had a top five passing offense in all of college football last year. And I would expect Seattle to be passing the ball like crazy in 2024. But on the downside, Geno is playing behind a bottom five offensive line. He might be a sack and turnover machine this year. And there's no guarantees that this college offense actually translates well to the NFL. These rookie coaches are more likely a work in progress rather than a finished product. I think there will be growing pains, especially early on in the season. And I'd rather bet on this whole team working in year two rather than in year one. So Gino is still just an average NFL quarterback at best. At the end of the day, I do not think of him highly, as highly as others, that's for sure. And despite two years ago having a resurgence and making the Pro Bowl, he did take a dip in production last season without offensive coordinator Dave Canales. So it's not a bad bet to say he takes another step back in 2024. And before 2022, nobody other than Pete Carroll had any confidence that he would make a name for himself at this stage in his career. He was notoriously just a backup with no upside. So his ADP is quarterback 23, pick 168. So I do think he is a value. I have him ranked higher, but without a Seattle stack on my roster, I'm not dying to draft him or any of these quarterbacks I have ranked higher. I'd rather draft Justin Fields, who is going later. But at number 22, I have Deshaun Watson, and I might be a little too low on Deshaun. His ADP is quarterback 20, so I am Ranking him lower than that, pick 153 overall is a fine price, and he did average 17.3 points per game last year, which was just better than Trevor Lawrence overall on a per-game basis. I have Lawrence ranked at number 16, but I don't trust Deshaun to give you a full season. Last year, he only played in five full games, so it was a very small sample size. He also got yanked after 12 snaps in a sixth matchup and another week he was cleared medically to play by the doctor and he just decided nah i'm gonna sit this one out so he has the leverage to do that again the browns giving him a fully guaranteed contract means he doesn't have to worry about getting cut and losing his paycheck he's getting paid no matter what for another three seasons in the league And this is why I don't trust him. If we see a similar situation take place this year, I'll probably say I told you so and kind of gloat that you probably shouldn't have drafted Deshaun Watson. And this is the main reason I'm not trying to take him myself. I also don't like the overall vibe of having him on my roster. I think we all know why for character reasons. His history speaks for itself, and I feel confident that I can win without him on my team. That's what the Browns were able to do last year. They made the playoffs with five different starting quarterbacks. So while I do think he's fine in terms of fantasy value, I'd rather just avoid the bad fantasy karma of having him on my team. I'm just never excited to click the button and draft him. If he stays healthy, he'll likely prove me wrong and finish closer to quarterback 15 or 16 rather than 23. But I don't think that's like a steal. I don't think it's like insanely good value. It's just a little bit better than what I'm expecting. So if you are a believer and still think he can be a top five quarterback like he was in Houston, in my opinion, you are lying to yourself. You are living in the past. And I think his days as an, as an elite athlete are over, I would be shocked if he's back inside the top five at quarterback anytime in the future. So I'm willing to be wrong about him. I think the odds of that happening are slim. At number 23 here is a player I am very excited about, and I expect to take some criticism for this, but I do not care. This is a gut call. I have Sam Darnold as my quarterback 23. I think he's going to put up consistent top 25 numbers as the starter in Minnesota with top 10 upside any given week because the coach and play calling combined with the weapons and offensive line is going to lead to a viable offense. They're not a playoff team, but they will compete even with Darnold at quarterback. In three full games last year as the starter, Nick Mullins threw for over 300 yards and two touchdowns in every single game. He also threw a total eight interceptions, but in fantasy, that was a top 20 quarterback regardless. So Darnold will clean it up a little bit more. He will throw some picks, definitely some bad interceptions that lead to touchdowns by the defense. And 
there are going to be some ugly plays here, but I'm not saying he's as good as Kirk Cousins. I am only saying he is a great value and he has a legit chance to be this year's Baker Mayfield. It's his last chance to prove himself. He finally gets a real opportunity to do that. It wasn't a fair shake in New York with the Jets, the Panthers with only DJ Moore after trading CMC, like what were you expecting to happen? And then last year he was backing up Brock Purdy this year he actually gets a chance. I know that Addison is likely going to get suspended, but it's not a guarantee as of this moment. Unfortunately, TJ Hawkinson won't be healthy until as early as week seven. It could be even later, but now we know for a fact that Darnold is going to be the starter all year long because JJ McCarthy went down. I'm not happy that happened. I would have preferred if Darnold just proved that he was worthy of keeping the job all season long, but I'll take it. If you've been watching this channel, you've seen me draft Darnold ever since March with belief that he will offer upside in this offense. And up until this week, he was going undrafted in most leagues. So we're going to see where his ADP settles. It's still round 17 or 18 at the worst. But if it doesn't rise much in the last weeks of August, then there's a potential league winner here, given his low roster percentage in best ball tournaments. I think he is a excellent contrarian pick in best ball mania if he's even better than this quarterback 23 ranking then you might be printing money by drafting him in the 17th or 18th round i'd probably just wait and see if it was a regular redraft league though because beyond a week one game versus the giants the schedule is actually very tough early on especially before the bye there's probably a one in four record inevitably looming for the Vikings, but in two quarterback leagues, he's a legit backup option. The Vikings playoff schedule is also fantastic. And once they have Justin Jefferson, TJ Hawkinson and Addison all healthy, hundred percent on the field, we could see Darnold average over 300 passing yards per game. Like we saw happen with Nick Mullins. So I really love his upside. There's really good potential here. And we've had two straight years entirely dismissing Geno Smith and Baker Mayfield. Darnold is my bet this year to prove the doubters wrong. I've been drafting him since March as that contrarian play, and it looks like that bet is going to pay off. I can't wait to see what he does this year in Minnesota. At number 24, though, I got Aaron Rodgers of the New York Jets, and he's in a new tier. I don't see him in the boom bust category. I think it's much more of just like capped ceiling backup value just a bi-week fill-in and streamer option. But I do understand if you want to believe in Rodgers. It's easy to do that. He's very talented. But I think the Jets' offense is extremely unproven beyond Brees Hall and Garrett Wilson. And they're very likely to just lean on their elite running back as they try to keep Rodgers healthy behind an improved offensive line. I'm hopeful that Rodgers does stay healthy, but coming off an Achilles at the age of 41 in December... I don't want to doubt him, but it's just not a guarantee to happen. And historically, he's been an elite athlete, but I'm not convinced he looks much better this year than his final season in Green Bay. In 2022, he only averaged 14.3 points per game, albeit without Devontae Adams. And that was not a top 20 quarterback for fantasy purposes. So that's why he doesn't offer like a ton of appeal, in my opinion, for fantasy, unless you're playing in a very deep league. Like if it's 16 teams and the quarterback spot gets very competitive, go ahead and take him. But unless it's a two quarterback format, I don't see the reason to be drafting Rodgers at all. If you're watching at this point, that's probably what you are playing in. So I get it if you are considering Rodgers for your fantasy team, but I'm just not convinced that Mike Williams, Malachi Corley, and Alan Lazard really move the needle very much this year. If I'm wrong, I'll be very excited, but I think Tyler Higby ends up being the third best receiving option in the Jets offense this year, and that speaks to how capped of a ceiling I think Rodgers is going to have. So if you're stacking the Jets, go ahead and take him as your backup, but I'd rather have three quarterbacks total on that roster if I have him on it at all. I wouldn't feel comfortable if he's my only backup unless I have someone like Josh Allen or Jalen Hurts above him. So his ADP is fine at quarterback 21, pick 158. I don't think he's a must draft in my opinion, but you can take him every now and then. I have done it, but let's hope we see him play a full season. I really want to root for him, but I'm likely not drafting him this year in fantasy. At number 25, I got Baker Mayfield of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and Baker's kind of in the same boat 
as Rodgers. I think there are reasons to be excited, ways that you can talk yourself into drafting him, but nothing that makes me convinced you have to do that. He has good weapons, but at 31 years old, maybe Mike Evans finally gets hurt. I doubt it. But without Dave Canales as the offensive coordinator in Tampa this year, we probably see Baker take a step back in production, similar to what Geno Smith did last year. So occasionally Baker does offer some rushing value, but it's not what you're expecting him to do on a weekly basis. Maybe I'm underestimating the new offensive coordinator, Liam Cohen, who did coach Baker in 2022 when they both were on the Rams, but I just have more excitement with other quarterbacks, several of which are being drafted later, like Fields and Darnold. And unless I'm set up for a Tampa Bay stack, I'm just never targeting Baker Mayfield in the draft with an underdog ADP of quarterback 22 pick 164. He's a fine backup, but beyond streaming potential, I don't have high expectations. I am pumping the brakes on Baker this year. Quarterback 26, though, I think is the last guy I'm trying to have on my roster if I need late round depth at quarterback. Bo Nix of the Denver Broncos looked ready to compete in his first preseason game. I don't want to overreact, but I do believe in Sean Payton putting him in position to succeed as early as week one. Last year, Russell Wilson averaged 17.4 points per game in 15 games, just 0.1 points behind Patrick Mahomes on a per game basis, and that was quarterback 13 in points per game. So I know Russ was adding about 25 rushing yards per game as well. He threw very few interceptions, but there's a world where Knicks offers the same value as well. Two years ago at Oregon, he ran for 510 yards and 14 rushing touchdowns. That is a part of his game. It's not his main skill set, but when he needs to, he can run it and he is mobile. I don't think he gets enough credit for that, but he is also accurate as fuck. He had a 77% completion percentage in college last year. He threw for over 4,500 yards, 45 touchdowns, and only three interceptions in 2023. And those numbers are very similar to what we saw Caleb Williams put up in 2022, the season he won the Heisman. So I'm not saying Bo Nix is Caleb Williams. It's not the same player, that is for sure. But he is ready to compete right away. He's played 61 college starts with five different offensive coordinators. This was a perfect match in Denver for him with Sean Payton. I know the Broncos don't have elite weapons though, but he's going to stay afloat in fantasy. I think from a floor perspective, with an ADP of quarterback 29 in the 18th round, you could do far worse. He is a valuable pick if you need quarterback, because he's risk-free at that price. That could turn out a lot better than we expect, but I think at quarterback 26, that's where he's destined to finish at worst. I think every now and then, he is worth gambling on. Maybe Greg Dulcich or Marvin Mims step up in Jerry Judy's absence. But this following tier are guys I'm really never excited to be drafting. And perfect example right here at number 27 would be Bryce Young of the Carolina Panthers. He was terrible last year. He only averaged 10 points per game, so literally unusable in fantasy. But there's only one way to go up from rock bottom. He will be better this year with better wide receiver weapons. That is for sure. They traded for Deontay Johnson, drafted Xavier Leggett. Jonathan Brooks and Jatavian Sanders, and they still have Adam Thielen as well as Jonathan Mingo. That's not great, but they also brought in Dave Canales to be their new head coach. And assuming they don't fire him mid season, like they did with Frank Reich, it's not unreasonable to hope that he can fix Bryce Young. That's what he did the last two years with Geno Smith and Baker Mayfield. So maybe just maybe Bryce can show those flashes that made him a first overall pick. Maybe he has the upside this year that reminds you why he won the Heisman a few years ago. I doubt it happens, but at quarterback 27, pick 194, I'm not targeting him, but I think he's appropriately priced at QB 27. I'll, I'll say that. But on the bright side, he's not going to lose his job. You know for a fact that they are committed to him for at least one more season. We'll see about next year if they do wind up with the number one overall pick again that they actually own the rights to this time. They probably draft another quarterback. It could be the last year we see Bryce as a starter in the NFL. Right behind him at quarterback 28, I have Will Levis of the Tennessee Titans, and there's probably more upside when drafting Will Levis 
in terms of fantasy production, but I'm not convinced he plays a full season. If the Titans struggle terribly this year, as I am expecting, I know there's a few reasons to be excited. For instance, they added Calvin Ridley, Tyler Boyd, and Tony Pollard, but new head coach Brian Callahan did not draft Will Levis. He is not committed to him if it doesn't work out. And Levis is not as talented, not even close to what Joe Burrow can do in this Bengals offense. So there's really no guarantees that this new offense ever gets going. His offensive line also sucks in Tennessee. And without Derrick Henry, we're not gonna see stacked boxes every single week like we did last year from opposing defenses. So I expect a few spike weeks for fantasy from Levis. I think there will be a few high upside games, but it's not gonna be consistent. It's gonna be hard to predict. It's gonna be very matchup dependent. And 32 year old DeAndre Hopkins is already injured he's arguably their best weapon. So this could derail very quickly if Calvin Ridley does not step up and if Hopkins gets injured again. I don't draft many Titans in the first place for stacking options, so I almost never draft Will Levis uh, myself, and I am not a believer at the end of the day. I would pass on his quarterback 24 ADP pick 173 overall. It's just too high. In my opinion, I'd much rather take Sam Darnold or Justin Fields or even Bo Nix going much later my quarterback 29 though i'll probably get some backlash for ranking this low it's daniel jones of the new york giants who actually does have some upside i'm not um, afraid to admit that two years ago he ran for over 700 yards and seven rushing touchdowns in this giants offense but then he got paid and looked like absolute dog shit last year i expect more of the same in 2024 and he's also coming off an acl injury there's no proof or guarantees that he's able to run it at the same clip, he might look even worse this season. So yes, he does at least have Malik Neighbors to get hyped about, but with no Saquon Barkley, he's gonna get exposed even faster than he was last year. There's gonna be no stacked boxes this time around. And the Giants can also move off of his contract at the end of this season. Only this year is guaranteed in terms of a cash commitment. However, like Derek Carr and Russell Wilson the last two years, there's also some contract clauses that mean if he gets hurt, then the Giants have to pay his salary the following season. So I think they're going to be very likely to move off of him even before December rolls around. I think we will be seeing Drew Locke take a lot of snaps at the end of the year. And if he's not going to play a full season, then why be committed to da drafting Daniel Jones in the first place? So it's just a matter of time before we see Locke under center. I don't think he's going to retain this job at all. I genuinely think that the Giants are competing with the Patriots for the number one overall pick in next year's draft. And even if they're the number three or top five in the draft next season, they will be drafting a quarterback, if not trying to sign Dak Prescott in free agency or trade for Kirk Cousins from the Falcons if they're willing to move on to Penix. So they will be moving on from Daniel Jones next season. I'm never trying to draft him unless I'm super fucking desperate at that spot. I understand if you think I'm underrating his rushing value, there is a chance he offers similar value to Justin Fields, but I think he's only gonna offer value in the beginning of the year, not the end of it. And I'd just rather not bet on Daniel Jones at the end of the day. No, thank you. At number 30, I have Derek Carr and I'm not drafting Carr either. The Saints ha also have an atrocious bottom five off offensive line. Carr also loses Michael Thomas and they didn't really replace him with anyone of note. Juwan Johnson has been recovering from foot surgery. And if anything happens to Chris Olave or Alvin Kamara, then this offense is hyper dependent on Taysom Hill. Carr has zero upside at the end of the day. He's strictly a floor play as a bye week fill-in. He's very matchup dependent. And oftentimes we've seen him come off the field in the red zone when they bring in Taysom Hill for those random weird packages of his. So if he got benched for Spencer Rattler this year, I would not be surprised. His coach is definitely going to get fired. There is no way that Davis Allen keeps his job into next season with the Saints. So I have them pegged for only four wins this year. I think they're a bottom five team in the NFL, and I will not make myself suffer this year by giving myself a reason to watch the Saints on a weekly basis. So do not draft Derek Carr. There is nothing to be excited about here 
avoid, avoid, avoid. These last five players I'm just ranking because they will get some starts this year. I think it is guaranteed. At number 31, I have Russell Wilson of the Steelers. He's probably going to get the start week one, but it's not guaranteed. He's still dealing with a calf injury, but at some point it might happen as early as week two. He will definitely be getting benched for fields at worst during that week nine bye for the Steelers. So that's why I have no desire to draft Russell Wilson. I think he's washed. Number 32 and 33 though, I have both of the Raiders starting quarterbacks in Gardner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell. You can't tell me with confidence who is their starting quarterback at the moment. If I had to bet, on one, it would be Gardner Minshew, but I don't think it's guaranteed. I think both players will be getting cracks at that starting job over the course of the season. I think it's going to rotate kind of like it did with Jimmy Garoppolo and AOC last year. Would rather not bet on these quarterbacks. But number 34 and 35, the last players I'll mention for this video are Drake May and Jacoby Brissett. I think Brissett is going to be the starter guaranteed early on. And it could last like six plus games, but at some point the fan base is going to get tired of losing. They're going to be uh, begging to see what Drake may can do. And also it's not a guarantee that may actually gets any starts this year because he's clearly a project. They might even put Joe Milton in at quarterback above him. I really don't feel confident that may offers much value. He's going to be turning it over a lot in a bad offense. So they're really guys. You have no, no, no desire. I have no desire to be drafting these two quarterbacks. Any of these last five, I think are a plague to avoid like crazy. So these are my quarterback rankings. We'll ignore the last five I mentioned and just show you the top 30 at the position. And a reminder, I already ranked those top 16 in a previous video and they're here on the screen. I think those 16 are really the better options that you want to be targeting but i still think 17 through 23 have legit value this year 17 through 19 are tua kirk cousins and stafford in their own tier decent value but some injury risk and uh no rushing upside at all this boom bust tier though justin fields geno smith deshaun watson and sam darnold could be league winners that is possible but after that i think you're just like praying for like floor plays and uh, good matchups with Rodgers, Baker Mayfield, and Bo Nix. And then I really have no desire at all to be drafting Bryce Young, Will Levis, Daniel Jones, or Derek Carr. Everybody else is just a backup and it's not worth considering them at this stage in the year. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content. Uh, you can check out the other quarterback rankings video right here. But until then, until next time, my name is Adam Riancho and thank you for watching. Nice and blunt.